Trying to understand the twin paradox is difficult enough without having to sort through all the videos on YouTube that claim to have the better or the real answer. Sure, these videos may say their solutions are complete or correct, but once you've watched them, you're likely still going to come away scratching your head. So just why are there so many different explanations? Which ones are right? Which ones are wrong? And why is there this lingering feeling of skepticism when we watch them? Today, let's find out. This is Dialect with Solutions to the Twin Paradox Are Still Wrong. A year ago, we uploaded this video, where we discussed why explanations to the twin paradox are intuitively unsatisfying and confusing. Commenters had strong opinions about the topic, with many coming to the defense of their favorite YouTubers. If you haven't watched the video, you can click here or find a link in the description below. It's a good place to start understanding the subtleties of the confusion surrounding the paradox. But we definitely haven't changed our stance on the topic. Not only do most videos not have a clue about what's really confusing their viewers, but they also overlook that there's a formulation of the paradox that's still a paradox. So we're going to break down these videos in more depth today and start taking a deeper look at these issues. So briefly, confusion over relativity is encapsulated by the twin paradox, which asks of two twins in motion relative to one another. If twin A sees twin B aging more slowly, while twin B sees the same thing of twin A, who is really older? The usual answer is that twin B ages less than his Earth-bound counterpart because his spacecraft accelerates. But as we discussed in our first video, this leaves out a major technicality, the fact that acceleration is also relative. That is, twin B has as much a right to say that it is twin A and the Earth that is accelerating towards him, and not his spacecraft that is accelerating towards the Earth. This means acceleration cannot be the answer. And any video which asserts that it is, and leaves it at that, is simply wrong. Most newcomers to the paradox will intuitively realize that coordinative acceleration doesn't make any sense as an explanation, but they lack the sophistication to formalize why this is so. Now, after viewing a lot of Twin Paradox videos, we've realized that there are two tiers of explanations to the Twin Paradox. The first tier gives the usual answer of acceleration and doesn't address the issue of its relative nature. These videos tend to try to make you think that the confusion will resolve itself if you just do the math or use a space-time diagram, even though, as we'll show, this is not the case. Or if they're super lazy, they'll just tell you something like, acceleration is different or privileged, or that you need general relativity, none of which are true. The second tier of explanations do address the deeper confusion, and each attempts to resolve it in their own way. But as we will ultimately see, these attempts only bring up more questions than they answer. So without more ado, let's look at these videos one by one. Okay, so from my perspective, every second that passes, I stay in the same place. So space-time diagrams can be a great tool for understanding how space and time transform in relativity. But because of their apparent sophistication, they're also an easy way to disguise the real issue at the heart of the paradox. Now, as Minute Physics explains, there is time missing from the space traveling twins' measurements, as depicted by the gray gap in Minute Physics' drawing. Which amounts to precisely, you guessed it, the missing 3.6 seconds. And this is the resolution to the twins' paradox. Because you but the hitch is this. This time is only missing if both twins agree that it is the space twin who turns around or accelerates. Acceleration is the necessary condition in order for the space twin's notion of time to rotate. This means that if the space twin asserts that the Earth twin turns around, it'll be the Earth twin whose notion of time rotates, and who thus experiences the missing time. This is seen most easily by drawing a second space-time diagram which is a mirror of the first, and which describes the world paths of the twins if the Earth twin instead of the space twin is decided to be the accelerating one. In this diagram, the Earth twin departs at a certain velocity, reaches the turnaround point, then begins accelerating back towards the space twin. The acceleration is represented by the sharp turning point in the Earth twin's world path. Now, in this space-time diagram, the gray missing time zone no longer belongs to the space twin, 
but instead to the Earth twin. Thus, since the Earth twin now fails to account for a stretch of passing time, they will discover that it is the space twin who is going to be the older one when the pair is rejoined. Thus, if you want to use the space-time diagram for describing the twin paradox, you have to draw two space-time diagrams, one for each twin's perspective. And as soon as you realize that both twins have the right to draw different space-time diagrams, you arrive right back at the paradox. To be able to draw one and only one diagram requires both twins agreeing on who the accelerating twin is. Minute Physics states this at several points, which is why his space-time diagram solution is in reality just your basic acceleration solution. At this point you might think, well hey, isn't it obvious who accelerated? If the space twin has to fire his rockets or turn his ship around, then obviously both twins will agree he's the accelerating one, right? But you have to remember that firing rockets or turning ships around does not constitute acceleration. Acceleration is purely coordinative. It's a description of motion given relative to an observer, keyword being relative. The tendency for people to confuse acceleration with other phenomena is explained in greater length in a prior video of ours, Can You Feel Force, which you can find a link to in the description below. Alright, now back to the videos. Anyway, here's how the typical explanation Now, we wanted to put Silence Asylum's video in the second tier of Twin Paradox explanations because, at least in the first half of the video, it actually does a pretty good job of touching on the deeper confusions of the paradox. Having one of the observers accelerate just adds another measurement to the list of things they disagree on. Forces are now on the list. But it's not that significant of a change. It certainly doesn't make one person right and another person wrong. It just makes them more relative. But then he takes 10 steps backwards by emphasizing that it's the mathematics which somehow solve the issue. Oh, it's rule number three. We forgot rule number three. We have to use the correct coordinate transformation. Like Minute Physics, he also goes on to insist on the importance of drawing a space-time diagram. But his video only grows more and more confusing. At one point, he asserts that you don't need to have the twins accelerate to illustrate the paradox. This paradox does not require accelerations. It persists even if Rocket Clone goes the same velocity the whole time. Then almost immediately afterwards, he contradicts himself by saying you do need to have the twins accelerate. Without the acceleration, we only get one shared event. The acceleration gives us a second shared event. It's hard to say exactly what is supposed to be the takeaway from this video, but certainly it adds to the impression many viewers mistakenly have that the paradox is somehow the result of doing the math wrong. Now, in physics, math is simply a model that follows our assumptions. Certainly, doing the math wrong is going to confuse you, but as long as your axioms are consistent, the math won't create paradoxes. So this should be the first clue that you shouldn't need math to understand what breaks the symmetry of the twin paradox. The second clue is that we already did the math back when we dealt with the space-time diagrams. Space-time diagrams are just graphical representations of the Lorentz transformations, which are the mathematical tools for handling special relativity. And since we already know space-time diagrams don't resolve the paradox, then we should realize that neither will the Lorentz transformations. However, for those of our more skeptical viewers, we're going to briefly show where the math breaks down. Alright, here we go. So Albert blasts off at half the speed of light away from Emmy. After two years on her clock, she sees him turn around and can calculate via the Lorentz transformations what his coordinates should read. After doing the calculations, she'll get that his clock coordinate at the turnaround reads the square root of three years, and that his space coordinate reads zero. Now. Albert can use the backwards transformations to see what her coordinates for this measurement read, and he'll confirm they'll read two years and one light year distance away. However, what if he wants to calculate what her coordinates should read in his frame? Well, for him, she's the one in motion, so he can use the exact same forward transformation that she used, but just with slightly different initial conditions. Namely, that her velocity is negative one half the speed of light. Thus, using the forward transformations, he'll see her blast away at half the speed of light, and after the square root of three years, he sees that she turns around. After doing the Lorentz calculations, he'll get that her space coordinate corresponding to the turnaround point reads zero, and that her time coordinate reads one and a half years. Thus, to summarize, when Albert reaches the turnaround point, 
Emmy will calculate that only about 1.73 years has elapsed for him, and two years for her. But in Albert's frame, when Emmy reaches the turnaround point, he will calculate that, while 1.73 years has indeed elapsed for him, only 1.5 years has elapsed for her. Thus, both twins at this point can claim the other is younger. Now, on the return journey, both twins can essentially repeat these calculations and get the same durations of elapsed time as they calculated for the outward journey. Thus, Emmy now claims four years have passed for her and about 3.4 for Albert, while Albert claims 3.4 years have passed for him, but only three years for her. But there's one part of the calculation still missing. Being that the Lorentz transformations are actually differential equations, they'll be affected by changes in velocity. So both Emmy and Albert now have to calculate how much time went missing from each other's perspectives at the turnaround point. There's two different ways to approach these calculations. You can model a gradual deacceleration and acceleration equation of motion and integrate the Lorentz equations, or you can jump discontinuously into a frame with opposite velocity and calculate the synchronization gap. Either way, you'll get the same answer. Since Emmy believes Albert turned around, she calculates that he will calculate her aging through the missing year during his turnaround, and that when he arrives back, his calculations will put her at four years of age, consistent with her actual age. But since Albert believes Emmy turned around, he calculates that she will calculate him aging through the extra 0.46 years, so that when she returns, their measurements will be consistent. Thus, even after accounting for acceleration, the paradox still remains. The twins are telling two entirely different stories. So what resolves it? Well, if both twins agree that only Albert actually accelerated, then Albert won't have to calculate Emmy calculating him aging more rapidly at the turnaround, and both twins will agree on the amount of elapsed time for all clocks involved. So wait, you might be asking, are you now saying after all this spiel that acceleration does resolve the paradox? No. Both twins agreeing on whose acceleration is more real resolves the paradox. But nothing in the math tells us why the twins are allowed to pick and choose one acceleration over the other. Therefore, something else must be responsible for breaking the symmetry of the twin paradox. All right, so we've run out of time to discuss second tier explanations to the twin paradox. So we'll be covering those as well as exploring the twin paradox in greater depth in a follow-up video. We understand that this video is pretty technical and not going to clear up everyone's confusion, so feel free to leave any questions you might have in the comments below. But for now, we just want to leave you with three main takeaways about the twin paradox. One, all motion, including acceleration, is by definition coordinative and therefore relative. Two, something else must determine what privileges one twin's time dilation over the others. And finally, three, the twin paradox isn't easy to understand. It's difficult and it takes work. And anyone who tells you otherwise probably doesn't understand it themselves. This has been Dialect. Thanks for watching.